everyone. I'm so excited to be here. Welcome. My name is Diana, like the dead princess. <laughs> I am a postdoctoral researcher at Monash University and I am brown. <laughs> I also have a funny accent, which means that I am the diversity token of the show. <laughs> Thank you, feels good, feels good. It actually gives me permission to make jokes about the British royalty without causing a car wreck. <laughs> I am a geneticist, and my research is all about how we can help endangered species not go extinct. And we do this using a technique called genetic rescue in which we find partners for endangered populations so that they don't have to mate within relatives. <laughs> <laughs> and trust me, as someone with a slotty absent father, <laughs> I really care about not shagging a long lost brother. <laughs> So let's talk about what I think is the most crucial topic in the whole world. Tacos. <laughs> you can take the Mexican out of Mexico, but not Mexico out of the Mexican. <laughs> As with everything in life, there are good tacos, and there are bad tacos. This is the best taco ever, okay? I took this picture back home. This is the holy grail of tacos. It's perfect. Mwah. Translated to Aussie, this is the Matildas of the taco world. <laughs> now you got it. Well, just like with tacos, when trying to save endangered populations, there are good management actions and bad management actions. Uh, my mission for today is to convince you that genetic rescue is a great management action. The equivalent of this taco right here. <laughs> so let me start my case by introducing you to this gorgeous Victorian fellow, the helmeted honey eater. <laughs> by the way, it is honey eater, not honey eater. <laughs> I spent the whole first year of my PhD pronouncing it like that. <laughs> True story. <laughs> anyway, the helmeted honey eater is a cutie, isn't it? <laughs> I mean, look at it. <laughs> well, it turns out that this guy has a tragic story. Picture this. You are a helmeted honey eater, and you wake up one morning <sighs> realizing that you have reached adulthood, and you are sexy AF. <laughs> you have the feathers, you have the beak. You look like a Ferrari, right? <laughs> you have thousands of years of evolution behind you. You can feel the song of mother nature singing within. And what you really, really want to do is get laid. <laughs> Perhaps I was the one pronouncing it correctly? <laughs> Just saying. You are a sexy helmeted honey eater and you are horny. So you go to Bert Tinder, obviously, and you find your sister. <laughs> you. Your aunt. Your mom. Your niece. <laughs> Your great aunt, <laughs> your grandma, <laughs> your dad. <laughs> and those are your only options. I mean, how tragic is that? <laughs> well, it turns out that us humans have destroyed the helmeted honey eater habitat so much 
that the population got super tiny. And at one point, everyone was related to one another. And they had no option but to reproduce like that. Don't judge them, okay? <laughs> they had no choice. <laughs> Unlike Tasmanians. <laughs> As you can imagine, unfortunate things happened over time. Have you ever heard of King Charles II of Spain? This is Chucky. <laughs> this unfortunate lad was the product of many generations of royals mating with one another, which made him highly inbred. Inbred. <laughs> Get it? And being inbred sucks. I mean, look at the guy. He was sick all the time, and he never had any children, despite his two marriages. Poor cousins, sorry, wives. Something similar happened to the helmeted honey eaters. We looked at their genes, and we found that the population got more and more inbred over time and that the most inbred birds produce 80% fewer babies than the least inbred birds. And that's for a population that is already small, huge problem. And this is where management actions come in. See, what happens a lot in conservation is that an endangered population is so precious. <laughs> that managers want to keep it isolated and pure because they think that we keep it safe. But that is a terrible management action. That is the equivalent of a Guzman and Gomez tackle. <laughs> Seriously, guys, how can you eat that? Do you know that every time you eat one of those, a Mexican grandma dies, right? <laughs> anyway, keeping an inbred population isolated is the worst thing ever because it only makes the problem worse. What you gotta do is the complete opposite, genetic rescue. And genetic rescue is like an exchange program in which students can go for a semester to another country to party, sorry, to study. <laughs> and boy oh boy, don't those studies get wild. <laughs> Oof. Don't ask me how I know that. <laughs> Sorry, babe. <laughs> it was before I met you. <laughs> That's my husband sitting there. He's brown too. <laughs> He's not my brother, I checked. <laughs> so the way to go is to do genetic rescue. Facilitate things so that lonely endangered populations can get laid and not with her sister, but with new exotic mates. <laughs> Who was the lucky suitor for the helmeted honey eater? A bird from Gippsland which is a different population that looks a little bit different, but it's the same species, like Aussies and Americans, and they can reproduce with no problems. <laughs> so, how did sexy time go? <laughs> In a nutshell, we put helmeted honey eaters and Gippslanders together. Turned off the lights, lit some candles, <laughs> Play romantic music and <laughs> what does it say about us that our job is to watch bird porn? <laughs> Shit can be good, can it? <laughs> Anyway, what I do know is that they produced mixed babies that are completely healthy and they are doing even better than inbred pairs. 
That, amigos, is another reason why diversity is cool. <laughs> Before I finish, I would like to deliver some wonderful news. Thanks to the efforts of many people and many institutions dedicated to their conservation and that implemented genetic rescue, the helmeted honey the population is finally growing. <laughs> and we hope that they will thrive in the years to come. So, Say yes to the best taco, say yes to genetic rescue, and say yes to helping endangered species get laid. <laughs>